Well, it's morning and I uh, don't know what time it is yet, but the sun's up, it's so bright, it's beautiful. We've got um, phones on charge, our charging banks are on charge um, in the sun. Um, we've got a couple of solar power banks. Uh, what else have we got done? We, we've managed to sort out some internet now so that our volunteers can have internet access when they're here. Uh, we had access, uh, we had issues trying to fix the phone to be able to get the dongle in. Um, to, well, to work the phone as a dongle. Um, so we've managed to sort that. So now we've got the internet sorted. We've now got power sorted. When I say we've got power sorted, we've got just about enough. Uh, we haven't got enough for lighting yet. We haven't got proper lighting sorted out. Haven't got our shower sorted out. Talking of showers, this morning I've been sorting some stuff out and noticed that somehow the mirror in the shower has been broke. Like, we've not even got the shower up and us usable yet. It's, it's just sat there no one should go near it and somehow the, the mirror's been broke it's like I bought brand new cutlery set and if you remember earlier on in the videos I, <laughs> I was using a fork to eat my porridge because when I first got here I had a fork and a knife uh, and, a, and a vegetable knife because I hadn't been able to get my cutlery down from Simon and all that part. Uh, and I managed to get some bamboo stuff, which was all right. We've still got some of that left, which is great because you can recycle it after you've used it and use it in the uh, fire. And I treated myself to a, a cutlery set from Ikea. And in the last week, um, the cutlery has magically disappeared. Um, and we only have four four knives, three forks, three spoons, three little spoons, which means a little spoon, a knife and a fork have magically disappeared, which is frustrating. So, you, I mean, you can't blame anyone, but, like, where the hell does it go? Like, is there a magical cuddlery stealing monster? who snaffles cutlery and takes it away to its little cutlery stash spot somewhere on site. I don't know. You know, um, I've been, like, thankfully Sarah, um, a friend, had donated a whole shitload of cutlery. And I said, right, this is the cutlery for everyone to use outside of the building. Like, because that, you know... It doesn't match, everything's fine, you know, and hopefully we can keep an eye on it. Only it didn't reappear in there. It hasn't reappeared near the wash wash like area. So the wash area has now been moved to down the side of the the tiny house because like if if people can lose it from here to I don't know if you can see just over there. So if if you can lose cutlery going within 60, 60 feet maximum of, of the property when you, you're all eating exactly outside where the cooker is and the kitchen is. So if people can lose it in that space, which is, it takes, it must take such skill to lose cutlery in, in a short pathway. Um, but people obviously do, um, then we need to remember to now not take cutlery uh, all the way over there because like people need and they have a desire to eat with cutlery and it, if everyone that comes gets given like a fork and say here eat this soup they're not going to be too impressed and part of what I do um, by hosting people is I've had to pay uh, or be given things that I take good care of because everything is sacred and I, I look look after it so people can use things like and have the luxury of using a, a knife, a fork, a spoon, a little spoon <laughs> only if if things like that just keep vanishing um, it's a luxury that won't be possible like 
people take for granted they think that cutlery just appears and and it doesn't just appear unless you're blessed enough and i'm really grateful that sarah was able to give me some but she she gave me some when she got some but for for two and a bit weeks i'd had no cutlery apart from a fork and a knife so you know, we need to remember to be so grateful for the these amazing things like cutlery. You know, it's 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 a, it is a luxury. You know, when you sit down and eat your food, you might not think twice. You might take it for granted you've got a cutlery, but we don't here. Well, I certainly don't. I'm very very grateful. You know, I pick up my knife and my fork, and I'm like. Thank you, universe, because I've got a knife and a fork and I can use them, you know, and I can eat my food. So <clears throat> so I'm a bit disappointed, a lot disappointed about the shower that had come all this way and been taken care of to somehow magically have a crack in it. Um, I'm, I'm sad that the cutlery has magically disappeared and I'm hoping that it shows up. Um, and as we continue to tidy up and sort things that will show up I'm tidying up in the kitchen because there's still bits of food been left down the side of the cooker and down the back of the shelves and on the floor which I'd not managed to sweep up because usually by the time I go in there I can't see um, and I can see now because it's daylight and I'm finally on to sorting that out so me and Batia here chilling well chilling sorting you know getting organized and Elsa and Bear have gone for a, a walk with the boys and we're gonna get on to trying to get things a bit more organized so we know that we've now got a washing station dead close to to where we eat so that'll be practical and the sooner we get the shower up and and sorted the better but that can't happen until the toilet block sorted, which is hopefully something we'll manage to do today. So, yeah, I, I just thought I'd share with you the truth about um, being a host and sharing space with other people when you're, you're off grid. Because as I am grateful for the help that I get and I am grateful for people that come and I love sharing space and I love sharing stories and I love to hear so much about different lives and learn about languages and ways of life and cultures and customs and there's so much beautiful things in the world so much but remember that this is a home and it's a shelter and a sanctuary for all that pass through it and everything here it came because of the goodness of someone's heart, the kindness of someone's spirit, the generosity of people, um, and the stuff that I collected myself over a, a many years to be able to do this. This stuff doesn't just spring up, and you know we're we're on a zero. We we aim for zero waste. We we are on a budget. We don't just have money to spend on fuel and like food that doesn't get eaten or you know I've got a whole load of beans here that got prepared um, and soaked that need to do something with so I'm hopeful that I can rescue them because I think they've sat there for four days in water hopefully they'll be all right and I'm going to turn them into some kind of mash with onions and garlic and do something with them to make a meal well, that's a hell of a lot of beans like <laughs> you know but um still it's you know, hopefully if i if i do enough i can invite people and say look i've got this this food that i'm making come on round and have something to eat so we can share with more <laughs> you know it's about sharing the excess but it really is important to be grateful uh, for what we have and be mindful when we're using it whether it's a fork or a spoon or some beans or the chairs that we're sitting in you know one of the chairs got broke within less than 24 hours it had got here and the chair the person was pulled over uh, off the chair not off the chair and uh, the leg snapped on the the brand new chair that had been gifted 
So <laughs> it's like, yeah, we really need to think about these things because now we've got five chairs instead of six and, you know, people might want to sit down. They might want to and they might not want to sit on the floor or they might not be physically capable of sitting on the floor. Um, yeah, it's it's not about le living a disposable lifestyle. Not, not for me. This This is a place where we take care of things and things are meant to last and things that aren't meant to last will find other uses and I have yet to find a use for a chair with three legs but watch this space because it's possible and something's going to happen and I'm going to sort it right I'm going to get on with sorting things and uh, thanks for listening to me and I, I hope this doesn't put you off coming and help helps you Hope it helps you think more about what you want to do and what you do with your stuff and be grateful of all the, the wonderful things that you've got to use that many people don't, you know. So, big loves and catch you in a bit. So, Elsa's got a sore foot after a walk this morning. She's had a meds for today and she's we're trying to keep her with me so she can not do as much walking. And here's the compost toilet so far. So we've used fence posts for the, the edges. We've got shower curtain up to for privacy screen at the sides. We're playing with an idea of a bit of scrap wood that we found to turn into a support for the roof. And we've got an old door uh, as a nice solid back piece. In the, the base we've used gravel. Um, and we're just going to see... Well, Elsa likes it. You like it, do you, lass? Eh? So we're, we're just going to have some lunch now. We're going to have some soup and have a think and uh, come back to see what happens after lunch. Okay, so, da -da. so we've used shower curtain for the side as privacy screens. We've got another shower curtain so it matches. <laughs> and Bear's pulling you all over. I'm sorry. Um, so we've now got a shower curtain that, so you can go to the toilet in privacy. We've got the toilet inside here with sawdust in for throwing in after you've been and some and toilet roll in nice waterproof boxes. Um, and inside the toilet, we won't show you in there because <laughs> we've been already, we've been using the loo. So inside is lots of browns, lots of carbons, and of course, human waste that isn't waste because it's, it's organic matter and we're going to turn it into fertiliser at some point. So it's all there. We're, we've got plans for the roof, but for now we're just going to chuck a tent over the top, tie the tent down, and uh, that'll do for now until we uh, find a big enough piece of plastic or something to go over the top so from here at creative roots creating toilets and it's a good day thank you okay so the best place for your compost pile is next to your compost toilet obviously less less uh, distance to carry your poo um, and your wee so then over over here and Please note you do not need a urine separator, especially not in Portugal. So here we go. We've got four pallets. It's that simple. Four pallets. And we're going to tie them together because we've got no screws. And when we get screws, we will screw them together. But for now, we're going to have four pallets tied together. This is the base only it needs to be adjusted so that's the base now we're going to the way i've said it is if you imagine visualize a bowl in the bottom of there a short bowl say two inches deep in the very center point and it's just gonna just slightly have a curve um so big circle and it's slightly curved so we'll just wait and uh, pause the video and see what happens next So it's a circle, not a square, but it looks like a square because around the edges he's pulling the, the soil up. 
it's going to the edge because well where else on earth would you put it you know pretty much perfect okay just a quick one um to end the day um the battery got sent out again battery is web uh, the 24 to 48 hour delivery all of last week we was waiting and they put the wrong address on they'd refused and this like this is going on two weeks now so they'd refused to put on the full address that they were given in the first place they insisted on having a different address. They insisted on sending it out to the different address. So I did everything as they'd asked and I did tell them and they didn't listen. And now, today, the battery has gone out to the address. And guess what? It got refused because it didn't have the correct name on. And packages with the wrong name on don't get accepted. And I told them this. So because they are incapable of writing the correct name and address on a package, it takes them two weeks to send out a battery that should take 24 to 48 hours. It's in, and the first time they'd sold me the battery that they didn't have in stock. Um, so, yeah, so hopefully, I've just emailed them now, hopefully they can sort it out and they can write the correct name on the box and then get it posted. Because the, the first time they were like, oh, we can't deliver it, you'll have to pick it up from Lisbon. Like, oh, yeah, I'm going to drive two, two hours to go pick up the battery. Yeah, of course I am. Well, two and a half hours, nearly three hours. It's crazy. So, yeah. So, that's that's the drama for tonight. Um, hopefully, they'll get that sorted. But apart from that, so many fantastic things have gone on here. Boys are set up in the Geodome now. Um, lots of things are more organised over here. I'm starting to look tidy. I absolutely know where things are. We've found three items of cutlery. Um, which were on the floor down the side of some stuff. So, don't know, but obviously they slid down and ended up on the floor in here. So that got sorted. Um, we've now just missing a fork. And that's, you know. So we've nearly got a whole cutlery set back. Um, what else? couple of plants near one plant's disappeared a succulent has vanished um but i guess maybe this place is like the great bermuda triangle of um magical disappearing reappearing things who knows we'll, we'll find out in time but for now i'm really pleased with the progress i'm really chuffed that we've got a compost toilet that's up and running we've got a compost pile that's ready to get the hay in um, so we can get that going. We've got things waiting to get turned into stuff. The rain should be due tomorrow, um, but just in time to have a covered compost loo that the boys can use uh, and guests and stuff. And uh, yeah, Bear's been out for two walks today, two long walks today. So hopefully that will uh, help him to settle down. Elsa's chilling, Batty and Elsa are back on the bottom bed. I, I want Batty in bed with me, but he wants to be on the bottom of there. And, you know, who am I? I'm just, you know, I'm just me. And Batty is just a little soul in his own right. So if he wants to sleep with Elsa, then that's fine. But I wish she was up here with me. I wish they all were, actually. I honestly don't think they can get up and get down. But... I can ad make an adjustment for that and get some stairs built in at some point so they can get up. Anyway, from us, big loves from Creative Roots uh, to you wherever you are in the world and so much love and gratitude for all everyone's doing an extra loves and gratitude to Andrea from Hedgewitch Healing and Tom mountain man who dropped off some things today to donate for creative roots um 
totally so so grateful great big bucket for collecting more as well in, in amongst the the fantastic treasures that they gave so we are so grateful to tom and andrea so from from us at creative roots to everyone else all over the world we send so much love and gratitude and we hope to hear from you or see you or see you soon okay night night